Say amen when you're there. Amen. Romans 8, 35. Says who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Question mark. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm here to do your good will. Preach your word, Father. Hide you behind the cross. And let be that is seen and only you that is heard. And we give you all the glory because you're worthy of our faith. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. And we all say, Amen. 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 You may be seated. Who shall separate us from the love of Jesus? Brothers and sisters, when Jesus saves you, he saves you forever. His love holds you tight. That's what this story of the Bible is all about. I was trying to find a sermon for love, and I came back to the foundation. This whole story is about a God who loved us so much that he sent his son, his only begotten, to trade his life for ours. Amen? Amen. Once he has you, you are his forever. Amen? First John 5, 11 through 13 says... And the testimony is this. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has the life. He who does not have the son of God. Does not have the life. These things I have written to you. Who believe in the name of the son of God. So that you may know. So that you may know. So that you may know that you have Amen. eternal life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Whoever believes in God's Son, Jesus, has eternal life. You don't need to work for it. You know, don't need to work to keep it. You don't work to get it. You don't work to keep it. Amen. That's right. You don't need to wait for salvation. Because it begins the moment you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? You don't need to work for it because it's already yours. Hallelujah. You don't need to worry about it because you've been given eternal life by God himself. Amen? And that means that your salvation is guaranteed and your salvation is 100% secure. Hallelujah. That's right. Some people hope that one day they'll receive eternal life. But 1 John says that we can know we have it. 1 John 3.14 says we know that we have passed from death unto life. We know. You can know it. A lot of people go around unsure that they have it forever. They believe they got it, but they don't believe they have it forever. And our certainty on our salvation is not based on anything we do. It's based on God's promise that He has given us eternal life through His Son. Amen. It's based on God's promises through Jesus. Hallelujah. This is true whether you believe it or not. Whether you feel like you're saved or not. Or whether you feel close or far, it doesn't matter how you feel. Amen? Amen? Eternal life is not based on your feelings. It's not based on your works when you do good ones or you do bad ones. Amen? It's based on the love of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm glad about that. That's right. The Bible says you can know that you have eternal life if you believe God's truth. If you believe God's truth, you can know for sure you have eternal life. And God's truth, of course, is Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's right, brothers and sisters. First, uh, John 5 gives us the truth, or two truths that we can lay a hold of and never let go. The first truth is that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son, and he who has the Son has the life. Amen. So our salvation is completely and eternally secure. 
According to this verse, God has given us eternal life in His Son, Jesus. This verse makes it clear that salvation is based on Jesus. Salvation is based on His Son, what He did. Amen? It's not based on good church attendance. It's not based on me being really nice to people. Amen? It's not based on how much money I put in the plate. It's not even based on how well I keep the Ten Commandments. Amen? Amen. That is great. The only thing that matters is that you accepted the Son of God. Amen. Amen? If you have the Son, you have the life. If you don't have the Son, you don't have the life. Pretty basic, simple. People make it hard. I know that sometimes it's hard to accept that these days. Because... You know, they teach us from when we're little that to make a good living, you got to work for it. Amen? That's right. That we have to work hard to make a living. That the harder we work at something, the more benefits we'll have from that. Amen? We are taught that we have to earn it. But God says that it's a gift that you can't earn, that you can't work for, and that you don't even deserve. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Man. Say you have. Man says that you have to work for it. But the Bible says something different. It's not what we do for God that matters the most. It's what God has done for us already. Amen. That's what matters. It's what God through his son has done. Amen. Amen. I just rhymed right there. My poet didn't even know. <laughs> That's right. Many times we focus on our works, but we need to focus on God's works. Amen. If we focus too much on our works, we're not going to feel safe and secure in the loving arms of Jesus. I'm not going to feel safe and secure or my salvation secure if I look at my works. Amen. The day we recognize that I'm a sinner. And that I need God. And then I accept God as my Lord and Savior. And I believe that He saved me from the wrath to come against my sin. That's the day I get salvation. Amen. When I recognize that I need God. And I recognize that I'm a filthy rag before Him. Even on my best day. And I realize and I give it over to Him. That's the day salvation comes. Amen. John 14, 20 says that on that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. The day you realize that you need God, and you can't do it without Him, that's the day you're going to realize that the Father is in you. He comes into you, and now he, the blood of Jesus Christ covers me, and man, all of a sudden, I feel safe, and I feel secure. Amen? That's right, the day we realize is the day that we get eternal life. Once we have given our lives to Jesus in the true biblical sense, that day you will have the Son. And when you have the Son, you will have the life. Amen? That's right, the Bible says that once Jesus has taken up residency in our lives, that we can be assured that we will spend eternity with Him. The moment he moves in, we can be absolutely sure that I will spend from that moment on, I will spend my entire eternity with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus. No troubles, no trials, no nothing, the devil coming at me. No one can condemn me. No one can judge me. No one can put a charge on me that will stick. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. He who has Jesus has the life. If you ever accepted Jesus in your life and you trusted him to be your savior, you were saved that day. Amen. And from that day on, you can be assured of your salvation. From that day on, you can know for sure that you will never perish. Amen. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. I'm trusting on Jesus' righteousness, not on my own. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. We do not have to guess anymore about what will happen when we die. Or be unsure when we make mistakes or fall into sin. Or do something, say something, or think of stuff. We don't have to ever be shook in and think that that's going to somehow take something that God has given me. Amen. Amen? That's right. The second truth is these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know. Again, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Amen. Some people say that you could never be sure of your salvation because they're basing it on their works. If I act bad one day, Jesus will love me less. If I act great the next day, Jesus will love me more. And then I go up and down according to how I act or perform. One day I'm performing good, he loves me. Next day I'm not, he doesn't love me. And in this base, and you're on this roller coaster ride, and you're never certain, you're never secure that Jesus got you and won't let go. That there's nothing that you can do to make him leave you or forsake you. Amen. Just like your child. Sometimes they're not the greatest children, amen? They do stuff we don't want them to do, and, and we're not happy with them. But they're our kids for life. Amen? We don't disown them. They're still part of our family. We love them regardless of their flaws. Well, Jesus made that standard. That's why we think that way. Because it comes from the Father above. All the stuff about our children came from God. So God loves you as a child. And yes, He doesn't like when we do things we're not supposed to. But it doesn't make Him love you any less. Yeah. He loves you the same when He gave His Son Jesus when you were out in full 100% sin in the world. And he doesn't love you any less. I can't do anything in my life to make God love me more than he loves me now. On anything I do, he just has a love that's everlasting. And he says, if you accept my love, which is Jesus Christ, you will be secure in that love from this point on until forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Give him praise right now. That's right. No more answers. That when I make mistakes, God's going to leave me or forsake me. No more of that. Amen. We can have true assurance because of something that Jesus did for us. Not something we did for ourselves or something we did for him. Yeah. Hallelujah. If we had done nothing, we did do nothing before he saved us. So why would we have to do something now for him to keep us saved? Amen. Amen. Colossians 2, 13 and 14 says, God made us alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins and he canceled all the written code with its regulations that was against us and stood opposed to us. And he took it away and he nailed it to the cross. Amen. Amen. He took what was against us and took it away. The law, the written code is the law that says we're guilty. He took that away and placed it on the cross and it got nailed there and it's there in the blood. Amen? Amen. That's right. God is the one who gives eternal life through Jesus. Amen. And he says it's absolutely free and he does that so that no one can boast about it. Amen? Amen. No one can say, I did it better than you. Amen? I did it better than you. I walked better than you. I'm not losing my salvation because I'm going to be good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. No one can say that. My salvation is secure in Jesus and not in myself. I'm glad. And I praise the Lord for that because I would mess it up. If it was up to me, I would mess it up. Amen. Amen. If I could lose my salvation, I would. Amen? Amen. And you too. If you think you could lose your salvation, if you could lose your salvation, you would lose it. Neither one of you would stay saved if it was up to you. Even the best one that walks on water every day, that flies above the clouds, and has all this spiritual and is holy beyond holy, you would still lose it if you could lose it. Amen? 
because no one is that good. Amen. If salvation could be lost, no one would make it. Why would Jesus hang himself on the cross knowing that we're not going to hold to it and die on the cross just so you would lose it anyway? <clears throat> it would be pointless. Amen. If a person believes they can lose it, then he would be basing his salvation on what he does instead of what Jesus did. Amen. Amen. If I believe I can lose my salvation, then I'm believing that my salvation is secure by my works, by my acts, by what I do. Amen. And it's never based on us. It's based on him. He knows we can't do it. That's why he had to step in in the beginning. Because he knows nobody can do it. So we need him to save us. He knew I couldn't do it even before or after I'm saved. So he knew I needed him to take care of that sin problem that I had. Amen. When he says that he took care of sin problem, he didn't make it to where we can't sin no more. Amen. Which one in this whole world has ever accepted Christ and never ever sinned again? See, he doesn't make it to where you can't sin anymore. He makes it to where sin won't condemn you anymore. Amen. Mm -hmm. And hallelujah, and out of that joy, and out of that love, and out of that gratefulness that he saved me, I try to do my best and try to honor and please God. But even then, I still fall short. Mm -hmm. Amen. But out of the gratitude of my heart, I want to be the best son of God that I can be. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's it. Doesn't mean I'm going to be successful at it. Doesn't mean I'm going to be good at it. But that he looks at your heart. And you want to do something for God. Whatever you can. To please him. Not because I have to. Not because it keeps me saved. Not because I'm going to hand brownie points with God. Not because of anything like that. You know God doesn't have any spoiled kids. Amen. <clears throat> he treats us all the same. There's no spoiled kids in God's kingdom. Amen. Nobody gets to get away with a little more than another and special privileges for one than for the other. He's the same yesterday, today, and for always. Amen. Amen. What he did for me, he would do for you. And just because I act better or you act better than me, ain't no extra privileges that you're going to get. You've already got all of God's love. He's, there's no way you can make him love you more than he does right now. Amen. Your salvation is secure in Jesus and not in your works because he who has the Son has the life. Amen. Once you've been washed in the blood, you have eternal life and there's no washing off the blood. The Bible says that the blood washes away the sin. It never says that sin washes away the blood. Amen. You put blood and sin together, you won't see the sin because the blood will take over it. It's like day and night, what Jesus said. They can't, there's no darkness in light. As soon as the light appears, darkness moves away. Amen. Well, the same thing. Once the blood appears, the sin is completely unseen in the blood. Amen. Amen. That's in God's eyes, and that's the only eyes that matter. Amen. Amen. When people are focused on what I'm doing, and where I'm falling, and where I'm slipping, and where I'm making mistakes, that tells me one thing, you're not focusing where you're supposed to. Your eyes are supposed to be on God. And when you have your eyes on other people, you're drifting off into sin yourself, amen? Because your eyes are supposed to be focused on the Lord Jesus Christ and His love. When you're pointing out somebody else's stuff, your, your focus is on the wrong thing, amen? Your focus is on others. But that's how the devil plays us, amen? The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But he cannot steal or take anything from you that God has given you, amen? amen. So you think, first of all, that the devil may be clever enough to outwit our Lord Jesus Christ or outwit God? Can the devil be clever enough to reach in God's hand and devise a plan to steal you from God? No, he can't. Do you think the devil can snatch one of us out of God's mighty, powerful hand? It's impossible. When you believe the devil can steal your salvation, or you can lose your salvation, or somehow you can, like, somehow leave it behind, 
then you're believing that the devil is stronger than God. Amen. Amen. John 17, 12 says, None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture may be fulfilled. Judas was the one doomed for destruction and he was lost only because it was written that he was supposed to be lost. God made an exception for this one. He needed somebody to betray him. He needed somebody to get him on that cross. It was his plan. The only way I could get on that cross is if somebody betrays me. And guess what? Judas got to be the one. Amen? And he says that no one has been lost. None. Not one. Except the one. Amen? None has been lost except for him. And it was only to fulfill scripture. None will be lost. None will be lost in Jesus. Amen? John 10, 28 says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. Me and my Father are one. Yes. See, no one can <clears throat> snatch you nothing out of God's hand. Amen? The devil can't do it. You can't get out of God's hand. When you sign up, it's a done deal. You make a deal with God, it's forever. No going back. Once you give something to Him, once you give your life to Him, once you give everything you are to Him, it is His. And He ain't going to let you take it back. He says, pay your vows to the Lord. Amen? Make sure you fulfill your, your debts to Him. When you offer up your soul and give them, it, it's done. Amen? It's written in blood. The blood of Jesus. Amen? Your name is written in heaven. In the Lamb's book of life. Life forever. It's never going to be blotted out. It's never going to be taken away. If you've accepted Christ any time in your life, 10 years, 20 years ago, you still have it today. You just got to refresh your walk in it. That's all. Your salvation is still good. It's as fresh as it was when you first got it. Your works might need to be refreshed. Your service to God and your honoring God might need to be refreshed. But your salvation is secure in the love of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's right. We are secure in Jesus. You are secure in God's love. And Romans 8.38 says, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is found in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing will separate us from Jesus. Amen. Any trouble, any trial, any demons, any principalities, He put it all in there. Nothing. Nothing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus, brothers and sisters. I need to believe that. I need to believe that it's on Him to keep myself secure and not count on myself. I need that verse to tell me that in the love of Jesus, I am safe. Amen? Amen. Because if I go by me, I feel lost every day. Amen? That's right, brothers and sisters. I'm not good enough. Even on my best day, I fall short of God's glory. Amen. If you think you're good enough to keep yourself secure and keep yourself secure and keep yourself safe, then you are living a delusion. Amen. You are deceived of the devil. If you can keep yourself safe, then you don't need a shepherd. Amen. What would you need a shepherd for if you can keep yourself safe? Amen. You need a shepherd to save you, first of all. Animal. They're considered dumb. <laughs> they can graze yourself off a mountain and just fall over without looking. They do that. They're just grazing, grazing, whoop, right off the mountain. They won't even know it. Amen. They get caught in the thicket and then their stuff gets all hooked on the, to thistles and stuff. And then they just start to death because they're trapped in a bush because all their things keeping them there. Or if they go in a little bit of water, they get so heavy they'll drown themselves. Because it, it, a, a sheep needs a shepherd, amen? And as soon as you realize you're a sheep, then you need a shepherd. But if you think that you can do it on your own, then you're saying you don't need a shepherd. 
I need a shepherd to save me, but I don't need a shepherd to take care of me. Well, I do. I need me some Jesus to save me, and I need a Jesus to keep me safe, and not let me just break myself off a cliff. Amen? The shepherd protects his sheep from harm, and that's what Jesus does for us. He not only saves you, but he keeps you safe. He protects you from eternal harm, from the things of the devil. Stuff will come against you. The devil will try to attack you, but they ain't going to devour you. Amen? There's many reasons to be afraid here on earth. Because we have an enemy, the devil. Amen? I'm not afraid of him taking my life. But I don't want him messing with it either. Amen? That's right. As a believer... We can expect to suffer. Jesus said we'll suffer. And the reason why is because we do have an enemy. And he is the devil. And he is plotting against you. He's scheming to take something from you. He's strategizing. He's trying to find every day new ways to give you trouble. Amen? Amen. He's got snares. He's got pits. He's got quicksand. He's got deceptions. He's got delusions. He's got speed bumps. He's got mountains. He's got all kinds of stuff that he puts in our way. And yes, sometimes it sucks, <laughs> if I can say that. But one thing I can tell you is that the devil has already been defeated by our shepherd, Jesus Christ. That's why we need him, we need him to shepherd us, to keep us safe and secure. Hallelujah, man. Amen. Satan can't harm us. He can't harm our soul. He can't take away our eternal life with God the Father. If we choose to follow Jesus, He will give us eternal security. <clears throat> eternal security, no matter how I feel, no matter if I feel guilt, no matter if I feel condemnation, no matter if I'm beating myself up for not being the greatest person walking in Christ, it doesn't matter. Amen. We are kept by His mind. And not by my works. Amen. First Peter 1 Peter 1.5 says, We are kept by the power of God through faith for our salvation. We are kept by God. Amen. By His mighty hand. Everlasting life is a gift from God. Hallelujah. Romans 5.8 God demonstrates His own love towards us in this. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. He loved us at our worst. How can He not love you now? Amen. He loved us when we were our worst. And now He considers us His best. Because now He did the work. Now He filled you and covered you in His blood. And imparted Jesus into your life. Now you're not His worst. Now you're His best in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's all God sees when He sees you. If you have the Son, you have the life. When He sees each and every one of you, He's not seeing your works or what you can do or what you are. He's seeing if He sees Jesus in there somewhere. If He sees Jesus in you, that's it. He who has the Son has the life. Amen. That's, what, that's the Jesus we serve. That's the Jesus we put our faith and trust in. That's the Jesus that keeps us safe and secure in His love. That is why you can be confident that when you die, you're going to spend eternity with Him in that mansion in glory. Amen? When we place our faith in His hands, no one and nothing will be able to snatch you out. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but will have everlasting life. Amen. That's love. That's true love that He would give Himself to us. Amen. And if you believe in Him, He says, you will never perish but you will have eternal life. Whoever believes in Him, not whoever believes in themselves, Whoever believes in his own ability and whoever believes they can keep themselves walking right now. Whoever believes in him, the moment you believe and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have eternal life or everlasting life, depending on what Bible you're reading. Amen? And everlasting means lasting forever, lasting or continuing, indefinitely, continually, constantly. And eternal means without end, lasting forever, always existing, ceaselessness, endlessness, enduring, 
persevering. Amen. Those words don't have any end to them. They're a continue, continuing, and continuing. There's no end. Amen. Whoever believes in Him shall not perish. Whoever believes in Him shall have eternal life. And again, I'm not saying you can go out and I'm not giving you a pink slip or a green slip to go out and sin. Be like, man, that pastor said I could do whatever I want to do. And man, I ain't going to be losing my salvation. And that's true to a certain point, amen? It's still true. Even if you go out and say, well, I could go out and sin and do all that. If you're truly saved, that is still true. But that's not what I'm saying, to go out and do sin and go out your own way. When you get the life, you become a son and daughter of Christ. Amen? Amen. And if you continue in your sin after you've been saved, then God will start to discipline you as his child for your sin and for your disobedience. But that's a whole other sermon that I'm not preaching today. <laughs> but I will get to it. Amen? Amen. I will. Let's stand up and give God some glory.